Okay, so we're going to look a little bit at uniformed circular motion here with problem number 10. It says a particle moves in a circle centered O with a radius R with constant angular velocity omega, which is that Greek symbol, counterclockwise. The circle lies in the xy plane and the particle is on the x-axis at time equals zero. Show that the particle's position is given by given by this. And then it wants us to find the acceleration, it wants us to find the velocity, the magnitude, and all that good stuff. So I have this picture here of the unit circle, actually, but it'll be helpful uh, with a radius r. And it's moving counterclockwise at some angular velocity. Okay. Well, we can, if we look at our, our particle here, and we can see it's written, it can be thought of as Y component and an X component here. And the X component, well, if we do some right triangle trig, that's going to be the hypotenuse R times cosine theta. And y, using the same logic, is going to be r sine theta. Okay? I also want to talk a little bit about omega. I'll use orns. Omega, the angular velocity, is theta divided by time. You can think of this as speed being distance over time, only because we're going off at an angle, our distance is theta, and our speed is omega. And if we did a little bit of, of manipulation here, we can see theta is equal to omega times time. Right? Nothing crazy there. Well, if theta is really equal to omega t, then I can say x is equal to r cosine. If theta is just omega t, I can just replace that. And exact same idea for y. Hopefully that bit makes sense. And just so it's obvious, I, I, maybe I should have mentioned it, this is the path that the particle's going, and it's going counterclockwise. So this blue line you can think of as just being the path of the particle. I just wanted to make sure the diagram was clear. Okay. So now, R of T, R of T, we can think of as being some X position X hat, plus some y position unit vector y. But we know what that stuff is. We know what x is and we know what y is. x is r cosine omega t. We have our unit vector x hat plus y. So this y and this x are what we're replacing. This y is r sine omega t and then y hat for our unit vector and this bit right here is describing our position this describes where on this highlighted this blue highlighted yellow circle the particles at if you want to know the velocity that's just the derivative with respect to time of r of t. So we just need to take the derivative with respect to time of r cosine omega t x hat plus r sine omega t 
y hat. So v as a function of time is going to be negative r omega sine of omega t x hat plus r omega cosine omega t, omega t y hat. And if you're not comfortable with that derivative, um, I think I've talked about the chain rule before in a previous video. Uh, I could do a calculus series if this part is tripping you up, but I would imagine if you're at this level of physics, you're, you're pretty good with your calculus. Um, but we can always review it. We can always review it, and I might do a bit on that. We'll see. But focusing on the problem, acceleration as a function of time is the same logic, just the derivative with respect to time of v of t. Which we know what v of t is now. We just found it. Negative r omega sine omega t x hat plus r omega cosine omega t y hat. So our acceleration as a function of time, let's see, well, that's going to be equal to minus r omega squared cosine of omega t x hat minus r omega squared sine of omega t y hat. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. You might notice that there is a negative omega squared in each term. So we can just factor that out. So that turns into negative omega squared times r cosine of omega t x hat plus r sine of omega t y hat. Um, this bit right here might look kind of familiar. Maybe if we scroll up a little bit. R cosine of omega t x hat plus R sine omega t y hat. R cosine omega t x hat plus R sine... Oh, that's R as a function of time. Right? So... We can also think of our acceleration as a function of time being equal to negative omega squared r of t. So this is a way of thinking of our acceleration function. Now let's talk a little bit about this negative we see right here. What does this mean? Well, the negative, it shows that the acceleration points against R of T. Or Another way of thinking of it, it shows acceleration is center seeking. And center seeking. So if we go back to our diagram, if our particle is here, right, this is our acceleration. Oh, I'll just put an A here to save a little bit of space. While, while R goes from the origin to the orange point, 
our acceleration is pointing right back to O. And it'll be like that no matter where we are along this path. Our acceleration will always be center seeking. So hopefully that bit makes sense. Um, what is the magnitude and direction? Okay, well, we talked about the direction. The direction is just, uh, it's going to be opposing R of T. What's the magnitude of A of T? That's just the magnitude of negative omega squared R of T. Right? Just putting that in there. What's is equal to? Well, that turns into positive omega squared absolute value R of T. Well, what's, what's this bit here? That's... What's the absolute value of uh, R of T? The absolute value of R of T is equal to the square root of R sub X squared plus R sub Y squared. Uh, these are technically functions of time, so I should include that. Which... If you remember at the very, very, very beginning, we talked about that. We talked about what X and or R of X and R of Y are. So, let's see, that's gonna be R cosine of omega T squared plus R sine of omega T squared. So R as a function of time is going to be what? Well, this is just R squared. So the square root of R squared, which is equal to just R. So the magnitude of our acceleration is equal to, now it's positive omega squared times r there we go i'm sure you've seen this before and now we know why that's the case um while we're at it let's talk a little bit about our centripetal acceleration if you remember when we're talking about centripetal acceleration that's your velocity squared over r well, let's think about what we know. We know that V of T is equal to omega R, right? We did that up here somewhere. Uh, somewhere up here. I think at the top, maybe. V of T is equal to omega times R. Oh, right here. You would just factor out your omega bit and change that around. So V of T is equal to your omega square or omega times R. So V sub T squared is just omega squared R squared. I think we wrote that up there, did I? I don't know. I'm not going to waste time trying to find it, but that's what this is. So now our centripetal acceleration is equal to what? Instead of the velocity squared, we could say omega squared over r squared over r. And you might see that this cancels with one of these. So our centripetal acceleration is just omega squared times r. So there we go. We worked through uniformed circular motion. Uh, we got a pretty little picture and I tried to at least conceptually show you what it meant. And then mathematically we broke everything down. Like I said, the derivatives, um, I don't feel like making this how to take a derivative uh, chain rule video. Maybe if anyone needs help with that, I can do that. That's totally fine. But uh, I, I didn't want to 
go too far off uh, the point of uniform circular motion. So there we go. We went over it.